If you hate plumbing as much as everyone else does on this planet, stay tuned and I'll show you the parts and fittings that you'll need to make a rock solid spunding valve for about 10 bucks. The Spring Plus plunger stopper styles haven't really been reliable in my experience. The course adjustment can be extremely fickle and assuming you're able to set it once well, it can easily bump out of calibration. If you were to make your own from small pipe fittings from big box stores such as Home Depot or Lowe's in North America, there's more room for error and those plumbing parts can quickly add up in terms of cost. Another type of spunding valve is the blow tie style spunding. A blow tie style with a gauge looks pretty cool, but they often malfunction when things get inside. Have you used any of the spunding valves that I mentioned? Leave us a comment down below if you have. Here's my recommendation on which spunding valve to use. And in order to use the quarter inch check valve that I like, we need to convert to quarter inch tubing. Okay, you're gonna need some quarter inch OD polyethylene tubing and you can get this at the big box stores. Here you can see it's milky white, though it is uh, also available in kind of translucent color. You only need a couple feet of it, but for the amount of money that you would spend for a couple feet, you might as well get the whole roll for future figurator builds. Today I'm gonna show you how to build two of these valves, one with a reducer and one without. If you need to buy a flared Cornelius keg disconnect or anything else listed in this video, check out the links in the description. On AliExpress, you can find these by searching the term reverse osmosis check valve. This is very important. The ones that I can 100% vouch for have a green sticker on the side and say Pood Kang. I'm able to easily find these on Google or eBay at crazy North American prices, while on AliExpress, they only cost one to $2. I've been using this brand for over five years because they are not adjustable and they simply work somewhere between two and 10 PSI cracking threshold every time. Apparently, the human body can only produce 1.5 PSI. So when you're scouting out potential spunding valves, give it a test. If you can blow past the cracking point, then it's not a good choice for a spunding valve. If you're finding value from this video, please like and subscribe to help the algorithm to help other homebrewers find this video. Okay, here are two setups. The one on the top is the one I have upgraded from, and this is the new one that I like more, but I'll show you both. So you have the same disconnect, uh, the quarter inch FFL here. And I start with that, and we got our FFL to 3 8 push fit. Screw on here, self-explanatory. Then you need to reduce from that 3 8 to 1 quarter. That gets us to the quarter inch polyethylene tubing. Do the check valve. Make sure the check valve is pointed the right direction. Okay, that's finished. Next one, quarter inch FFL. Here's the quarter inch FFL to quarter inch push fit adapter. Like quarter inch tubing and the check valve. Pointed, of course, the correct way. Testing your check slash spending valve is as simple as filling up a keg with water as to not waste gas, putting your freshly built spending valve on the gas side, as well as connecting your CO2 source via the liquid side of your keg. Slowly start to ramp up the PSI starting from zero on your regulator. As soon as you hear a hiss, you know that the cracking pressure on the check valve has been reached. So let's try it now. Nothing, nothing. Okay, so we got it right about 10, 12 PSI there. This check valve operates at such a low cracking pressure, which means if you were to leave it on through the entirety of the ferment, you would lose a great deal of CO2 capturing ability. It is my recommendation, when you see the fermentation slow to two bubbles a second, pull the valve off entirely. Check out my spunding valve in action. Check out the video I made right over here, where we brewed raw ale in this closet. For efficiency, I'm able to crank out a ton of beer, about 10 gallons, in a few square feet. And if that's something that interests you, check out my course in the description below called Small Spaces, Minimal Gear, Lots of Beer on your Demi. If you hate plumbing, if you hate plumbing as much as everybody else does on this planet, stay tuned and I'll give you the exact part fittings and numbers. If you hate plumbing as much as everyone else does on this planet, stay tuned and I'll give you the fittings and parts that you need give you the fittings and parts.